Um, let's take a moment to talk about Peyton Sanford. And I'll tell you, Gary, um, again, we mentioned this during our, our conversation with Jess Settles the other day, but uh, you and I had, had so many conversations about what do you do with Peyton Sanford? How do you get him going? Do you bench the kid? He was 0 for 20 to start Big Ten play. I, I mean, you look at the, the uh, official box score and stat sheet, he, he took over the second half. I mean, he had big shot after big shot. You think about the four-point play, you're down four with under a minute to go. He hits a three, gets fouled, knocks down the free throw, nothing but net. You go to overtime. I don't know that we've seen a more impressive shot than the the shot at the end of the shot clock where Chris Murray launches a three that's an air ball. Peyton Sanford gets his feet taken out from under him, composed, hits the shot off the glass, gets fouled, hits the free throw. I mean, what what do you say about Peyton Sanford? Well, it's just that it's great to see if you you know you felt for him when he was struggling. I think the other interesting thing was that he didn't play particularly well in the first half in terms of shooting. And in the past, that's usually been uh oh, you know, he misses a couple. All of a sudden, it's he misses a bunch, but he um, came back in the second half and was phenomenal. So that's a real good that's a real good sign. That's a big step that uh, he um, you know he got he got through a uh, an average first half and had a great second half. So. I uh, didn't let it, didn't let it get to him first. And Kim uh, rightfully brings up the play of Josh Dix, who just continues to get more and more minutes. He, he seems to to me to be a fearless kid. He's not afraid of taking the big shot in the big moment. Um, you know, you saw him. I don't know how many boards he had, but as Kim brings out uh, five assists on the night, he's earning more playing time. Gary and we can talk about the struggles of, of Tony Perkins later. I feel for for Tony. He's got to get going. I think this team's a lot better when he's playing as we know he can play but just talk about the freshman right now yeah he just uh, continues to get better and better he like you said he's he's playing with a lot of poise he handled the ball a lot uh tonight under a lot of pressure and you know it didn't seem to bother him he was he, he was fine he did hit a couple of big shots especially in the first half and and uh coach went with him uh all the way down the stretch and into the overtime so that's got to give him that's also got to give him a lot of confidence and and uh it's good because that's another another kid to add to the mix that was a pretty thin lineup. So um, really, uh, really impressive to see. I normally talk about this towards the end of our show, but Mark brings it up in the bench. Uh, we, we mentioned Josh Dix. How about Peyton Sanford, who was starting earlier in the year, and perhaps he'll end up being a starter again, but perhaps he's better off the bench, Gary. But you look at uh, the, the bench numbers for Iowa. Uh, you got Sanford playing 33 minutes. He was perfect from the free throw line, 404, four of nine from three, nine of 17 overall, 26 points. Uh, just one short of Iowa's leading scorer, which of course is Chris Murray with 27. Josh Dix had 10 points, three rebounds, five assists. DeSante adds six minutes. And how about Riley Mulvey with 13 uh, minutes? We didn't really talk about him, but he did play against Rutgers as well. Um, I think part of that, Gary, is, is need. Right. Uh, Josh yeah. Gundle is out and and there's some guys who aren't playing great and it's given Riley an opportunity. And I, th- I think he's held his own. Just your thoughts on Riley Mulvey. Yeah, I, I thought he did, too. You know, it, uh, it was the first game that Philip got into a little bit of foul trouble and uh, they needed him to play some minutes. And between the two of them, they kept um, they kept Dickinson under control. He didn't uh, you know, he had a double double, but it wasn't a back breaking double double. And uh, so they um, you know, they almost equated him, which uh, going in, you probably thought Dickinson had, a, had an advantage. And uh, and I thought the same thing with uh, Phillip as I did with uh, Sanford. He got off to a little bit of a slow start too. I think the the size of Dickinson bothered him a little bit, uh, but he hung in there and had a much better second half and and finishes with, I think, with another double-double, which is uh, getting to be a, a regular occurrence. All right, let's get to our next caller. Thank you for calling Iowa Post Game with Coach Gary Close. Who's on the line? Uh, this is John this evening. Gentlemen. How are you, sir? I'm good. Uh, Peyton, he seems like his game gets going better when he steps inside the three-point line and starts shooting jumpers or even goes in the post. And then that seems like the success there carries over to the three-point line. Uh, am I right on that? or? No, I, I think uh, I think that's a good point. I think um, first off, as a scorer, you want to be able to score in, in all different areas of the court. If you're just a three-point shooter, and then you're a lot easier to guard than if you're a guy that can attack the basket and have a little bit of a mid-range game. And 
I think the big thing with, with shooting is confidence. So if you can get some shots that you can make, then the basket looks a little bit bigger and sometimes the percentages reflect that. So uh, I think he has done a better job in so shot selection. I think he's done a better job of attacking the basket and being more active. And I think that's helped him improve his percentages. Is uh, is he turning sideways on his three-point shots? It looks like he's turning sideways as he lets the ball go. Well, he takes a lot of shots, you know, flying off of screens. And so uh, those are not easy shots to make. And, you know, he's you got to pivot and turn. And so I think you're right. Sometimes it might look like he's a little uh, not squared up as much. But a lot of it's just a reflection of the type of shots he's taking. 